Good evening. This is that one guy broadcasting from Snowy Holland. Uh, on the forums, it was requested by a user named Landwalker that I try to fiddle with my microphone to be a little bit louder. Um, yeah, I have an unregistered version of Bandicam, and by that I mean sort of the free version that they just give you uh, until you register. So I have no idea how I could possibly make this any better. Um, I'm sorry, I really am. But moving on, we're going to be talking about space stations. And uh, specifically, we're going to be talking about space station theory, which sounds really stupid, but we'll get into it. The first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to create some method of getting the space station into orbit. Now, back in the 1970s when uh, NASA was doing Skylab, they did not actually launch the Skylab up in a manned spacecraft. They launched it up first uh, with a computer-guided spacecraft, uh, the Saturn V rocket. They just hollowed out the third stage, I believe, and just put in the uh, giant space station, and then they were going to send up an Apollo on a Saturn V B or something like that. I don't remember the exact rocket designations, but the point is they used computers, so we are too. We're going to use this, the hexagonal probe. I don't remember exactly what it's called. It's the OKTO. Then we're going to need some fuel. This looks like it'll be enough. Then we're going to need a way to propel this. So we're going to do that. That is not quite right. There we are, that. Now the reason we're doing this is because on top of this, I need that, and then we need a good deal of RCS. There we go. Because this whole unit right here is actually a pretty standard drone that I use. And uh, what makes it a good drone is that the uh, probe body is down here, which means I can put whatever I want up here without having to worry about spatial concerns. So now what we're going to do is we're going to raise it up and we're going to put a booster underneath it. So we're just going to build a standard asparagus booster design. Okay, let's see here. I believe this and not that, this. And I noticed that my rocket got a little shaky last video, and I think that was due to interference with the recording software, but we're just going to secure it with some struts. Not a huge deal, you don't have to generally, but it just makes the rocket a little bit more stable. So we're just going to set up the asparagus design, and I'm going to go ahead and just speed this up through time warp. Okay, and that was eventful. Now I'm going to go ahead and finalize this drone. Now, as a drone, it needs electrical charge, so we're going to go to Utility, and we're going to go ahead and do a 4 times symmetry on... Let's put on three rings of batteries. And I'm using the 4 times symmetry here because we're also going to need to put on these thruster blocks up top and down low for the docking maneuvering, and then beyond that we're going to use the SP-B photovoltaic panels, and these are the ones that come out and just make a straight line. The A version uh, makes this sort of square that's uh, more conducive to bases. Now you'll notice that I put a regular, just standard clampatron docking port up here, and that's because this is actually not going to be what's uh, facing up. So let's call this a station probe. Hmm. <laughs> station probe Neapolis. 
uh, which Neapolis means new city. Now, we're going to get another Clampatron docking port, and this is going to be the top of our station. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit either A twice or W twice, and it'll flip it over. A does it that way, D does it that way, W will rotate it like that, Q and E will do that. But the whole point is, we need to secure it like this, so that uh, these two are connected uh, by a docking port rather than um, anything else. You could use a decoupler, but this allows the uh, Neapolis um, to be more, I don't know, functional. So next we're going to need a control center, so we're going to use a lander can, and I'm going to flip it over again. Then the lander, then the station's going to need some way of stabilizing itself in orbit, so I'll put um, an SAS on there. Then, let's see, but first we're going to also put on this rechargeable battery. That way uh, we can have some power going into the station. We're going to need some place for the crew to live. And, let's see, what else, what else, what else? Hmm... We're going to need a solar panel, we're going to use a big one, but uh, let's see, where is it? We're only going to use one of them, because we only need one of them. So we'll do... Oh, that's right over the window. We will do... Well, that's right over the viewing port. Hmm. Okay, we'll do this, right below the window. Now, what that will do is give us enough solar power to keep an all the hypothetical vital life things alive. Um, we could also put some sciencey stuff on here. I mean, we have a need to communicate with the ground, but I'm going to make this look a little bit better first by adding that adapter and that. So now it's more aerodynamic. And let's see what kind of science do we want. We're going to need to be able to talk to the ground, so we'll put on one of these short-range communication things. We're going to put on a thermometer on the other side, just so that we can check the temperature. Then, in order to be sure that this whole rocket doesn't shake itself apart, we're going to do some stuff with struts. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the struts with a 4 times symmetry and attach the payload to the drone itself. Next. We're going to take with, oh goodness, a four times symmetry. We're going to secure the central booster to the rocket, or to the thing. Then lastly, with an eight times symmetry, we're going to secure the, there we are. We're going to secure the pod probe thing to the rest of the rocket system. Cool. Now you may have noticed that I have the entire system, this lighting off in the asparagus design, then this is conjoined with that. But the other thing you'll notice is I don't have parachutes, and that's because this is meant to be a disposable probe. Um, it's not really meant to survive. So that said, let's talk action group. Action groups are this other set of uh, commands we have right next to this is parts. This brings out the parts menu to build. Action groups gives you electronics information. So custom one is bound to the one key, two to the two key, three is three, four is four, all the way up to ten is zero. So first thing we're going to want is we're going to want some way to deploy all of these panels at once because clicking on all of them takes time. So we're going to go ahead and say if we uh, hit one, we want these panels to toggle their status which means if they're closed, they will extend. If they are extended, they will close. So that's cool. Next, we're going to want to activate the thermometer, the antenna, and this solar panel, but we don't want to do that all at the same time. So I'm going to go to Custom 2, and I'm going to click on the big solar panel, toggle it, click on the antenna, have it toggle that, and click on the thermometer and have it toggle that. Now, what that will do is, when we hit 1, this will extend. If we hit 2, it will cause that to extend, and then we have a space station in orbit. So, that said, let's go ahead 
and there we go. We'll save that up. And this thing is a fully functioning Skylab-esque uh, um, space station. Wow, I'm kind of dozy tonight. So the last thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to make sure that the ladder can get from the uh, lander can down to the crew quarters. Uh, and in real life, they would be going inside the space station, but they don't have the IVAs implemented. So we're going out to the launch pad. What in the heck is up with that? There we go. Alright, I'm going to do all my pre-flight. And here we go. So far, so good. Um, this is just a standard launch. So, yep. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to mute myself, and let's see, I've been running into some copyright issues on YouTube with uh, music, so I'm not going to put it to music, but I am just going to speed up um, the flight, so yes. <laughs> Alright, and I'm back. I just realized that this is my first time playing in the Unity 4 engine. Um, it's actually running quite a bit better. I'm not getting random spins. Uh, I'm taking a slight hit to the frame rate, though, but uh, you know what? For not having my rockets spin out of control when I'm using them, that is a fair price to pay. So here we are. This is our station, and we are going over to the sunset side of Kerbin. Now, as you see, we're going through uh, our electricity not very fast, but given time, we would eventually drain it all. So if I hit the 1 key, all of our action group 1 things pop out, and the solar panels will, or should, turn around to try and find the sun. Ah, there we are. So what we're going to do is we're just going to have this whole thing rotate 180 so that we can get a full effect of it, and that's a pretty cool, it's a pretty cool effect, uh, just watching that spin in space. Now, uh, the next thing that I'm going to do is we're going to have to select an orbit for our space station. Now, we could just leave it in this parking orbit if we circularized it a little bit more, but uh, that is a bad idea in that uh, if we do that, we will have a high risk of running into this station when we do uh, maneuvers that require parking. And by parking, I mean we just put ourselves at an altitude and wait for something to happen. So for this station, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to burn prograde until the apoapsis reaches my desired orbit. And I'm going to put this at a 200 kilometer orbit above the surface of Kerbin. Thanks, bro. Um... So right now I'm just letting this burn up to almost 200,000 meters. I used RCS to correct a little bit. Now we're going to come back here. Time warp. Yeah, the thing that threw me at first was that new um, font. I thought that there was something wrong with my game, but then I realized, oh wait, Unity 4. Alright, there we go. It's actually kind of cool. I like the way it's it's a lot smoother. Um, props to Squad. This is awesome. So I'm going to turn on RCS and turn myself prograde and circularize the orbit. And then I'm going to teach space station release. So here we go. Let's line this up. And when I get on that, I'm going to double check everything. Let's see here. Is that good? Yes, it is. All right, just a little bit like that. So we're going to go ahead and speed up um, and have this orbit increase. And when this reaches 950, oh, there we go, 200. 
We're going to speed up. Oh, this is absolutely phenomenal. Unity 4 is awesome. We're going to do this. And then we're going to go ahead and do that. And a 300 meter difference is within the NASA definition of circularized. So next, we're going to turn this so that our craft is facing the south, which means the docking port on the station is facing the north. Now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to hit three. I'm sorry, two. I'm very used to flying the uh, uh, um, Apollo-style Mung craft that I have, and three is a button on there. Now you'll notice that our big solar panel extended, our communications dish extended, and it's actually reading a temperature right now uh, in the vacuum of space. So that's pretty cool. That changes as it goes around the uh, planet. Now what we're going to do is we're going to decouple the node. We're going to hit R. I'm sorry, we're going to turn our RCS on, and we're just going to give it a couple of nice little nitrogen bursts. I'm assuming they're using nitrogen to get us away from this craft. Because right now there's nobody inside of it. It's just orbiting. We're going to have to send up a craft to... Alright. There we go. We're slowly moving away. That's good. Alright. We are far enough away from it that we're not going to have it... We need to turn the other way. That we're not going to have it... Uh be caught in our engine wash just to be safe. I'm sorry, that was... There we are. I had to translate and figure out where the heck I was. We're going to move over a little bit more. And now we're going to power up. And there we go. The station is being left in orbit. And our disposable craft at full throttle is going to come back down to Kerbin. And that is just flying away. Excellent. Now, the next step is to send up a crew and rendezvous. Uh, I have already taught that, so I'm going to try and keep this video short. And you can practice rendezvous on your own, as long as you left it in either a north-south or south-north orientation. Uh, it should be very, very easy to approach it and dock. However, the one thing that you're going to have to remember is there's nobody in that station, and if you get close and you bump it and it starts tumbling, just have one of your crew members EVA over to the station and get into the lander can unit and just stabilize it, and that'll make your life a lot easier. So this has been that one guy, a quick sta uh, tutorial on stations. And this is a very simple station. You can put up uh, complex stations with uh, craft similar to this, as long as you have some way of getting it into orbit, you can actually put more docking ports and make very complex space stations. Um, I may be able to post a picture of one of my old stations on here. I'm not sure if I still have any. Alright, this has been that one guy. Thanks for watching.